Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to build on our previous setup by adding code coverage to our Node.js Express app with TypeScript. We're also going to be integrating variable management, advanced logging, API documentation, and some essential security enhancements to make our app production ready. Let's jump in. Before we dive into today's additions, let's quickly recap what we've already set up. We have a Node.js Express app running with TypeScript, Prettier, ESLint, and Jest for unit testing and automated code quality checks with Lint Stage and Husky. If you missed that, check out the previous video. Now let's enhance our setup further. First, let's add environment variable management using the .env package. This will allow us to securely manage configurations like API keys and database connection strings without hard coding them into our source code. Now create a .env file in the root of your project to store your environment variables. Let's add a simple variable as an example. Open your .git ignore file and make sure that .env is referenced in the file. This will prevent us checking in our .env file. Create a .env.example file with the same contents as .env. This is a file we can check in which will be an example of our .env file. Non-sensitive details can be in this example. In our index.ts file, we will load these variables at the start of the application. To verify the .env file is being loaded correctly, change the port to 4000 and run dev. You should see the console output as running on localhost 4000. Next, let's set up code coverage using Jest's inbuilt support. We'll update our test script in package.json to include the dash dash coverage flag. With this change, Jest will automatically generate a code coverage report each time you run the tests. The coverage will show in the terminal as well as in the HTML output file in the coverage folder. You can display the HTML file in the browser and filter for test cases. To make debugging easier and keep track of what's happening in our app, we will add Winston and Morgan. This will give us flexible and configurable logging with Morgan acting as our middleware to log HTTP requests. We will be using the excellent Winston Logger and Morgan middleware written by Andrea Vassallo. Create a logger.ts file in the SRC folder and make sure the file looks something like this. Next, create a middlewares folder in the SRC folder. Then create a file in the middlewares folder called Morgan Middleware.ts. Make sure the Morgan Middleware.ts file looks something like this. Now we have our loggers, let's use this in our application. Import the logger and middleware into the application. Consume the middleware with app.use. Create a demo endpoint to show what the logs look like. And then we can curl the endpoint to see the output. As this is a setup video, we won't go into too much detail regarding the logger and middleware. However, I highly recommend you read Andrea Vassallo's article for more context. In future videos, when we create more endpoints, you will be able to see the logger and middleware in action, so keep an eye out for these. Next, let's add automatic API documentation using Swagger. We'll use the Swagger JS doc and Swagger UI Express packages to generate and serve interactive API documentation based on our code. Before we go any further with our documentation, we will first refactor the code base to separate the roots. This is a good practice to keep your code organized and maintainable, especially as your application grows. First, create a roots folder in your project directory to store all your root files. Next, create a file for the root endpoint and the logger endpoint. In the roots index.ts file, import the request and response object types as well as the router class and create a new router instance. Then define your index get endpoint on the router instance and export it so it can be used by the app. Follow a similar process for the roots logger.ts file. However, you want to change the path from slash logger to slash as we will define the root in the main app. In the main app, delete the two root handlers and import the new root files. You then want to call app.use, passing in the path and the router for both index and logger routers. I'm just going to do a bit of a tidy, removing the request and response types, and also renaming the files to be consistent with middleware file. 
Now we have completed our refactor, let's carry on with setting up the Swagger docs. Import Swagger JS doc and Swagger UI, add some configuration options and add a route to access the docs. With this setup, Swagger will automatically generate documentation for the routes defined in our project. Let's take a look how this works with our index and logger routes. To include your routes in the Swagger documentation, you can add comments above each route handler that describes the endpoint, parameters and responses. Here's how you can do it for the routes in indexrouter.ts and loggerrouter.ts. Now you can access your API documentation at api-docs. This will give you an interactive UI to explore and test your API endpoints, complete with the descriptions and details you've provided. Finally, let's make our app more secure by adding some essential middleware. We'll use Helmet to set HTTP headers that protect against common vulnerabilities and calls to configure cross-origin resource sharing. We can easily integrate these into our Express app. With these security enhancements, your app is better protected against a range of common threats. By default, Helmet sets a whole list of sensible headers. For calls, we're allowing all calls requests for now. In future videos, we will look at changing this when integrating with a client. Before we finish, and as a bonus, let's make our imports cleaner by setting up root imports in our TypeScript project. This allows us to import modules using absolute paths instead of relative paths, making our code easier to navigate and refactor. First, let's update our tsconfig.json to define paths for root imports. We'll use the paths and base URL options to configure this. In this configuration, we've set base URL to dot slash SRC, which makes SRC the root of our project for import paths. We've also defined path aliases for middlewares, roots, and libs. Libs is a new folder which we're going to create, and we're going to move our logger file into libs. Now let's update the imports in our project files to use these root imports. When we come to run the project, we get an error because Node.js cannot resolve the module path alias when running the project in development mode using TS Node Dev. This happens because TS Node Dev doesn't automatically support TypeScript's path mapping configured in tsconfig.json. You need to explicitly tell TS Node how to resolve these paths. To resolve this issue, you can use tsconfig paths package, which helps TS Node and TS Node Dev resolve path aliases defined in your tsconfig.json. Now update your dev script to use this package. The dash r tsconfig dash path slash register option tells tsnode to use tsconfig paths to resolve your path aliases. Now when you run a development script again, you should see it run fine. Now when I check in the code and run the linters and tests, the tests break. This may be either due to having a separate tsconfig.json for jest or due to the configurations for jest. I would first try and change the tsconfig.js.json to include the base URL and the paths to see if this fixes the issue. And it looks like the issue hasn't been fixed, so we know it is a jest.config.js issue. Similar to how we fixed the issue for the dev script, we will install a package to help us resolve alias the paths. After that, update the jest.config.js to include the custom resolver. Now when we run the tests, everything passes. Currently, if we run npm build and then run npm start, we'll find the same runtime error as the previous two scripts. To resolve this, we'll install the module alias package. We'll then add an underscore module aliases section to our package.json file to define the same path for Node.js. We we'll also need to change the start script to use the module alias register flag as shown. Now we can run the start script again to make sure it all works. And that wraps up today's video. We've covered a lot of ground from adding code coverage with Chess to enhancing our project with environment variable management, advanced logging, API documentation with Swagger, and key security enhancements. We've even set up root imports to make our code base cleaner and more maintainable. These additions not only make your project more robust, but also prepare it for production level deployments. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future content. In the next video, we'll dive into more advanced tools to take your deployment setup to the next level. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.